we are so fortunate to be joined by men's head basketball coach, Nico Medved. Really appreciate him taking some time. Nico, can you hear me? How's it going, man? I can hear you. Can you guys hear me? We can hear you just fine. Thank you for doing this. Uh, I don't know if you heard at the beginning, but I, I was kind of talking you up. I just said, you know, a lot of coaches, they wouldn't do this after a two-game winning streak, let alone a two-game losing streak. So I really appreciate you for giving us some of your time. Um, I guess just first things first, how are you sensing the guys are responding from this? This is a veteran group. It's a tough situation. We knew this league was going to be a gauntlet, though. Oh, I think they're I think they're doing fine. I think, you know, you're like all of us, you're you're disappointed and, and you want to win every game and we didn't play well. Uh, I think, you know, you're, the focus just remains on yourself and how do we improve? You know, how do we play better? Um, but I think as you know, we're in this little bit of a break here, a bye week. I, I think the other side of it is you you look up and you kind of look at the big picture right now and doesn't take long to just kind of watch college basketball the last couple of days and see our sport. It's kind of what makes our sport um, so cool. You know, it's it's different. Anyone can beat anyone on any any given night, and you see it all over college basketball. And you got to be able to to respond to these things and 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 move on to the next one. And so um, we're disappointed. You know, we, it, we expect we can win every game and wish we would have played better, but. Boy, if you let that get you down too much, uh, you're going to be in for a long haul. That's kind of the funny thing, and I was joking about that on the pod, is you know, for weeks and weeks and weeks, we were talking about the strength of the Mountain West, how good this league is, how hard it's going to be. And then when faced with that reality, sometimes the fans are like, oh my God, you know, the sky is falling. We know that's not the case. You, you know, This won't be the, the last team in the mix to drop a couple on the road. What was your biggest takeaway, though, from this loss on Tuesday night against Boise State? You guys battled, you hung tough, uh, but what did you feel like was the, the biggest difference in that outcome? Well, you know, disappointing. We really played We really played excellent defense for most Great of the D. game. I mean, if you were to tell me, we would have held them to, you know, 39% from the floor and a, a packed house and a huge game uh, like that, I, I would have thought, boy, I, I really liked our chances, but... You know, really early in the game, we we turned the ball over a ton. Uh, I thought we forced some bad shots. We weren't um, stubborn enough to to get the shots that we wanted. Now, you know, you got to you know credit your opponents too. I think when you get into league play, Justin, I mean, oftentimes it's harder to get good shots. Everybody knows each other so well, um, which is why it becomes harder to get easy baskets. But we really didn't give ourselves an opportunity with some of the sloppy turnovers and poor shot selection and. I just thought that really, really cost us. And in the second half, you know, when we got it going a little bit, for whatever reason, I thought we had a lot of quality looks. We just couldn't get anything to go down. And so really, really frustrating night on that end of the floor. You know, the rebounding was pretty good most of the night. It got to us late, you know, in the game, and we had no margin for error, and we just had to get every stop. And so really disappointing. We didn't we didn't play better on that end of the floor because I, I, I thought we really, really guarded well. And it was frustrating. You know, I was frustrated. The guys were frustrated. It was a long road trip. We were on the road for, for, for six days. And, um, but I think, you know, again, as you, as you get up and you assess things and you try to look at the big picture too, I think, uh, sitting where we are right now, you know, 13 and three, uh, we still, everything we want is still right in front of us. And we got to focus on what's next year. You mentioned the turnovers. I'm sure that's an area you'd like to see them clean it up. I think it's about three more per game than what you guys were averaging in non-conference. The, the three-point shooting is down, but it does feel like the shot selection as a whole has been good. It's not like guys are jacking up bad shots. It just kind of seems like some of the shots that were falling early, some of these open shots from deep, uh, some of the post touches you know, for, for Joel Scott and some of these guys, some of the layups that they were converting on, maybe just... I've been just a little off these last couple of days. Is that a situation where you just wait for it to regress back to the mean, knowing that you're getting good opportunities, or do you try and shake it up a little bit? Well, I think, you know, it's a little bit of both. You go through ebbs and flows in a season. You know, guys, you miss shots, make shots. I mean, I think you want to look at your overall shot quality. I, I, I think for for the most part we are, but I, I also think we can work harder to get better shots at times that, that, than we have. And again, when you get into league play, it becomes harder and harder. And um, especially sometimes in those, uh, those situations on the road, you know, I, I, other than, you know, we got court storm twice, uh, um, you know, and, and that's awesome. I, I think the venues around the mountain West, the level of passion that these fans have, the quality of play in the league is just awesome. And so, 
Um, I think it's a little bit of both. I think we can be better. Uh, um, some of the decision making, some of the passing decisions um, can continue to get better as we understand how teams are, are guarding us. And sometimes you just have to be a little bit more stubborn and work a little bit harder uh, to get quality shots. And you can't get down when good shots aren't going. That's You don't control that all the time. That's the way basketball goes. And you know, I'm a believer water does find its level and guys who've shown that they can can make shots will eventually find their groove again. And I think people have to remember too, guys like Jalen Lake and Josiah Strong are just kind of coming back into mm-hmm. the lineup. And I think sometimes, you know, just taking a little bit of time to, to find their groove. I think hopefully both of those guys will find, you know, they'll get their braces uh, off their hands and, and hopefully that stuff will, will help them too. So um, we just got to focus on getting better and, of all the confidence in the world in these guys, and, and uh, we'll be ready on Tuesday. I'm sure that's probably a bit of the factor as well. I mean, some of these guys coming back from injury, some of the other guys that were playing while they, while you know Josiah and Jalen are injured, now their role kind of changes. I just the the whole kind of flow. Maybe it takes some time to get used to it. Um, you mentioned needing to to work the ball, uh, be a little bit more stubborn at times. That was one of the things I talked about. Just trying to get to the line a little bit more, um, you know, only 10 free throw attempts, I believe, or 11 against Boise State. W- would you like to see guys be a little bit more assertive in that regard? And have you sensed any hesitancy when the shots aren't falling that maybe guys aren't, I don't know, as, as aggressive? No, in, in fact, maybe I'd even go the other way. I mean, I think sometimes, you know, Boise does a great job and like much like we did, I mean, of playing physical without fouling. I mean, I think that's something, do I... I think, to be honest, a lot of times, you know, we played really good defense. We forced them late in the shot clock. We would get stops. And what I mean by being stubborn is I think sometimes we were too aggressive. We were trying to make okay. things happen maybe that weren't there, you know, forcing turnovers and in transition or maybe forcing a shot. And I mean by stubborn is sometimes, you know, you, you and, and we've been, listen, these are things we've been good at for most of the year. So it's not like it's something that hasn't shown up before or that we haven't shown we're capable of doing, but you're only as good as your last game, right? Uh, uh, just because you did it yesterday doesn't guarantee you can do it uh, uh, today. Um, so we just, you know, sometimes we need to be a little bit more stubborn, a little bit more patient at times. And just because we like to run and push the ball in transition doesn't always mean you're going to get quality shots early in a possession. And again, it's harder to, to, to score against good teams. And so, um, the, the, the level of basketball being played in this league is, is, is absolutely tremendous and the coaches do a great job. And, um, so that's what I mean by being stubborn is that sometimes you probably have to be a little bit more patient and sometimes Justin, you know, you, you, you work hard and it doesn't always guarantee you're going to get a great shot. That's the way this, this game works. But, um, so it's a little bit of all that. And then I think sometimes what happens is it just takes, you know, one or two shots going in and kind of that, that mojo, so to speak. Uh, starts to come back and, and we've got to find that again, but it's just, you know, one of those streaks that we're in right now. I've asked you about this before and it's just something that like having observed Isaiah Stevens now for so long, getting to watch Nikola Jokic with the Nuggets. One of the things that I feel is very similar about them is they're so unselfish. Like it's, it's just a part of their DNA. They want to facilitate, they want to play make. I think at times it's maybe even more important to them than scoring. Isaiah is obviously a very competitive player. I just wonder, are there times, and I mean like very, very small instances where you'd like him to maybe be a little more selfish and like this, this is an Isaiah possession. Like I love that he's facilitating. I love that he's creating for others, but maybe if you're down and the shots aren't falling, this is a situation where we need him to go into that like Zay mode that we saw against UNLV. Well, I, 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 you know, I, I think that's a tough one because, you know, the one thing I love about him and, you know, he's the first one to, to own it. I mean, you know, he'd be the first one to say, you know, hey, I didn't I didn't play as well as I could play on this on this road trip. And I think it's a fine line. You have to be who you are as a player. You know, if you try mm-hmm. to be somebody that you're not, I think that's when you get into trouble. And for sure, we want Zay to be aggressive. But I think also sometimes it can go the other way where sometimes, you know, you feel like you have to try to, to mm-hmm. do something. You try to have to make something happen that's not there. And when you draw so much attention, you still have to play the game that you're comfortable playing. And 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 I think so that's a fine line. And, you know, Zay has the green light to, to be aggressive. Um, 
Um, but sometimes, you know, you, you can almost become too aggressive too at times. You try to tell yourself, I got to make something happen that's not there. And Zay is an all-American level player. He's a tremendous player, but he's, you know, he's not James Harden, right? He's Isaiah Stevens, you know, and, and, and I think, and, and, and you know what I mean by that is that he still has to play the game that he's comfortable with playing. And sometimes that does mean being more aggressive, but sometimes it's just continuing to make the right play. And, and, uh, and that's what he has to do. We got a lot of guys who can put the ball in the basket too. And so um, I think that's a fine line when you say that, but you definitely can't get out of character. You have to play the way that you know you're capable of playing at the highest level. What kind of growth have you seen from Neat Clifford? I mean, when you look at his numbers right now, it's insane, like 60% from the field, over 50% from three. He's shown he can do it all. He can get to the hoop. He can hit jump shots. I mean, I imagine this is what you envisioned when you, when you brought him over. He, he's been awesome. I mean, it's just to, to see the buy-in and just kind of, you know, let go and just live in the moment. And he's getting so comfortable with what we're doing, um, letting the game come to him. And, and I, I, I'm a believer, you know, we're talking about it yesterday. And, and you know, when, when guys start to play really efficiently, it's a combination of they work really, really hard at their game. They're in the gym. Uh, um, uh, they spend time at their craft. They're watching film. Um, they're buying into what we're trying to do as a team and they're taking good shots. You know, it's usually a combination of all those things. And he's really doing that at a high level and he's making the game look really simple, but he's being aggressive. He's really doing a great job within our system and he's such a great young man and so coachable. And it's been great to have him, you know, have him have the success that he's having. And, you know, he's continuing to get to the top of guys scouting reports and that's going to continue to happen. And, and, uh, but I, I think he's going to keep it going here and he's just, uh, um, been really dynamic for this team. I know, uh, you got to get out of here in just a sec. I don't want to take up too much of your time, but uh, you had an opportunity to go down to Denver, see David play in person with the Grizzlies. His role has been expanded a little bit of late. That's a, and they've got some weird circumstances going on as a franchise that we don't have to get into, but what's it like to see a guy that you signed and developed catching bodies in the NBA and like being sports center top 10 worthy. Well, there's just nothing more gratifying as a coach than to see these young people, you know, come in and they give you everything that they have and to see them living out their dreams. And it's, it's really awesome. And it's so cool to have David as connected as he is still with our program and our guys. And like I said, it didn't work out, you know, last season for us to see him in person based on our schedule. So it was great to, had the opportunity to, to, to go see him in person play and um, it's awesome. And he's going to continue to do great things. And um, I love, again, like how he still follows us, uh, watches all the games when he can. And, and I think that's really, really cool and um, really, really proud of him. And he's, as you know, he's as good of a kid as he, as he is player. Um, and it's fun to watch him. I try to turn on the Grizzlies every opportunity I get. Last thing I just wanted to ask you, and, and we kind of got into this a little bit earlier, but do you feel like the, the weekend off is beneficial just in terms of getting a chance to reset or would you have rather played and then kind of off of that as well? You, you know, you talked about getting court stormed back to back times, probably nice to, to come home a little bit, although it's, it's cool to see and it's a nod of respect to what you guys mean. And you know, the college basketball conversation that a win over the Rams is worthy of, you know, storming and back to back outcomes. Yeah. I mean, I, I read in the, you know, both the games we played, I was in the, the Boise uh, paper, you know, I don't try not to read much of what the opponents say, but I, I realized we were, they had the nation's longest home winning streak. And I think the, the mantra that day was, we you know, we have the nation's longest home winning streak and a win tonight against the Rams would be the biggest one of, of all of them, you know, considering where they were at. And it is, it's cool. And, and the great thing for us is, Justin, when those teams come back to Moby, they're going to face the same thing. Yeah. And that's what makes college basketball great. And, and, you know, there's going to be ups and downs, you know, as we keep going on in the season, you just got to keep, uh, um, keep grinding, keep going forward. We believe in, in, in what we're doing and believe in each other. And, and that's what we're going to do. And you know what, maybe this time off is good. It was great to get back home. So we've been on the road for six days. So to have an opportunity to get back and get in a routine, you know, kind of when you're on the road that long, a lot of these guys kind of get out of the routines that they have and, so I think to be back is great. Uh, get back to the practice floor a little bit and um, get ready to get back after it. And I can't wait 
uh, to get back out to Moby and have all of our friends uh, back behind us. Our students uh, are back here, are, gonna, are going to be back um, next week. And so it's going to be a fun ride in the Mountain West. And um, there'll be ups and downs, but, uh, you know, we're going we're gonna to fight, I can tell you that. I can't wait, man. This These next couple of months, I know it's going to be a challenge, but it's just going to be so much fun. It's awesome to see uh, this program, you know, be elevated the way that it has, but also just the whole league. Like as a Mountain West guy, it's fun to see night in and night out the quality basketball that's being played. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, you know, this this means the world to me. You've been great since the, the first day that you came into the program, and we're obviously always rooting for you. So uh, see you next week. I'm looking forward to it. And Nate, thank you so much. Yeah, Justin, man, anytime, man. I'm always happy to, to come on and, and, and talk about the Rams. So appreciate you covering us and, and uh, we'll see you soon. Sounds good. Stay warm out there. Thank you.